I switch, so, oh, there we go. That's easy. Um, so if you didn't bring your laptop, that it's absolutely fine. You can see other people struggle with it. I expect people to struggle with it. Um, like part of why I wanted to do this is that um, a lot of flamenco, at least the, the current implementation, uh, comes from me, and that includes documentation as well. So I made it with a certain mindset. I wrote the documentation with the same mindset. I have a certain terminology. If it doesn't click, then basically there is not really another source of up-to-date information, and that so is, is also why I want to help people get it installed. Also for me to learn what the current pain points are and where things are still unclear, what needs to be improved. Uh, so a little bit of an introduction. I'm going to do this rather quickly so that we have enough time to actually do the install on your machines and see what, what's going on. Um, if there's anything unclear, just wave your hands. Um, Flamenco is our render farm of Blender Animation Studio. And it's being used in pet projects. Oh, well, this is actually the working, like the working title, uh, Wing It, um, Charge, Sprite Fried, and a lot of other productions. But these were actually using the new Flamenco 3. Um, that was a whole rebuild. Flamenco used to be part of Blender Cloud and used the Blender Cloud infrastructure. People were afraid of using it because it's like your IP on somebody else's infrastructure. What's going on? You never know for sure. So one of the major design principles of Flamenco 3 was simplicity. You have to be able to install it on your own hardware, not be dependent on anything else, and be confident that it doesn't do unexpected things and send your stuff to you don't know what. So the premise was that it would be as simple as Blender. You download a zip file, you extract it, you double click an executable, and it runs. And for something as complex as a render farm, that was quite a challenge. People were asking, like, why do I need to use OpenQ? Because that's also an open source render farm. And then you read the installation documentation, and it's like, that. I said, no, no, I don't want that. So simplicity is important. For today, we're going to look at getting stuff running. I'm going to explain a little bit about the storage options, and we'll play around and see what the two of the three different options do. Uh, we'll be looking at custom job types, because the job types are the thing that you can easily adjust in Flamenco to make it do what you need to do in, in your specific situation. Um, and then there's a little space, and after that we're going to look at variables for cross-platform support. And this is like only a show and tell, not really using it because you don't have a mixed, mixed uh, farm on one laptop. And then plenty of time for q and I hope. So to start, please download Flamenco plus the demonstration blend file. This is the QR code, that's the URL. You also have a bit of paper somewhere nearby where you can find it. Um, while you're downloading, I'm going to do more talking. Uh, so to get things running, it helps to have some information beforehand. People who have seen the Flamenco 3 talk last year might recognize some things. Um, so this is basically the structure of a Flamenco farm. You have your artist, running Blender with the Flamenco add-on installed. And that artist submits stuff, files, Blend files to Flamenco. Flamenco consists of one manager that manages all the workers. And then there's a pool of shared storage. And that can be like a network drive, typically it is. At Blender we use uh, NFS, other people will use Samba or something else. And then you can see that between the artist machine and the shared storage, there's a dotted line. Depending on which storage option you choose to, for your farm, the artist either saves there directly, is working there directly on the shared storage already. Many studios work like that. But if you go more advanced, then they can submit actually to the manager, and then the manager stores it on the shared storage. And then the artist doesn't need direct access to the storage except for fetching the render result. So Flamenco works with jobs. When you say, render this file from frame A to frame B, that's a job, is one thing that will fail or not or be completed. And that consists of many tasks. And every task is a unit of work for a worker. So if you want to render an animation, you can say, well, every 30 frames needs to be one task. 
and then a worker comes along, picks up that task, renders, like starts Blender, renders 30 frames, stops Blender again, and says, done, give me the next task. Depending on many factors, of course, you all know this, you want to have, like, you render quickly, maybe because you're running EV and it's all real time and it's fast. You, you don't want to have the overhead of starting Blender and stopping Blender and starting Blender and stopping Blender. So you have a big chunk size. Uh, maybe you have very long render times and you really want to parallelize that over many machines and then you want to have one or two frames per, per task. And then you have these tasks. Every task consists of one or more commands. Typically, this is just one. Run Blender with these arguments. Run FFmpeg with these arguments. I write that it's high-ish level invocation because it's not just run this command line. Because that command line will be different for Windows, for Linux, for Mac. You may want to move a file or move a directory. And again, those commands are different on different systems. Also, Flamenco knows that you're running Blender, so it can monitor the output of Blender on the like it's standard output logging. It can, because of that, it can tell when it outputted a new file. That means that it can pick up that file, make a thumbnail of it, send it as a last render. Uh, all those kind of monitoring it can do because it understands it's running Blender at the time. So once you have some jobs, like during the production of charge, the jobs are here on the left. Act, like job is selected. These are the tasks and some job details about like what is the blend file, which format is it rendering to, which frames are output. And these, like blend file is the only parameter that is understood a little bit by Flamenco. The rest is all arbitrary. And that is just because this is a simple blender render job type. We'll look at how that is done later. But if you want to modify that, once you have your own settings in there, you can tweak that. We'll look at that later. And then given that this task is selected, those are the task details with an identifier and the, the fact that it's complete, which machine worked on it last, what the priority date was, and you can see the Blender render command there. It's all a bit clipped, but once you click on the open full log, it will open a, a new browser window and you can see everything that happened. So let's look at installing stuff. By now, I hope your download is done. I'm, I'm just going to talk about it. I'm not even going to really show it because it's like a split screen thing. It's a bit annoying. So I would say extract Flamenco. Uh, oh, by the way, question. Who is running uh, Windows on their laptop? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, quite a few. Who's running Linux right now? A bit less. Who's running Mac? Also quite a few. Nice. Uh, so apologies to the Mac users. <laughs> um, Currently, we only have an uh, AMD, like so, Intel build. Uh, and that is because from the FFmpeg website, I could only find a pre-built FFmpeg for Intel. Um, I'll tweak the URL. I think if you copy-paste the URL for the AMD build and change the AMD64 to ARM64, uh, you actually get uh, an incomplete build of Flamenco. So Flamenco itself is there. It's just missing FFmpeg. If you can find it somewhere else, plonk it in in the tools directory. It should find it. Um, it's my desire to make that like a proper thing. I want to work with uh, Blender platform maintainers to have our own FFmpeg build that we can trust. We know where it comes from. And I feel confident sharing that with other people. Uh, I'm not just going to pluck a binary because it works and tell people to use it. So extract Flamenco. I'm going to assume that people either run Windows or have the mental, like they know how to translate this stuff to, to the platform of their choice. So I would say create a directory Flamenco slash software on probably your C drive. Extract Flamenco there, so you will see uh, the Flamenco manager executable, the Flamenco worker executable tools directory. Make sure that you have Blender 3.6 or newer installed. Then you also have the demo file. So Make another directory inside C Flamenco, make it project, because this is going to be our studio project that we want to render. And then run Flamenco Manager. And you should just be able to double click the executable. On Mac, it's a little bit more tricky because it's not signed yet. So you have to go through the settings to allow like 
insecure applications. I'm sorry about that. Also something I would love to, at some point, get right. Then when it, you start it, it should start a browser. And that browser should show you a little bit of an, of an introduction that includes this image. It starts explaining a little bit about how things work. And then you get asked, what is your shared storage location? For that, pick that project directory that you made. So this means we have a shared storage. It's, it's fake, of course. It's not shared with anything, but it's accessible for all the, all the one worker that we'll have running. And that's the important bit. Every, every part of the farm should be able to reach that shared storage. And the Flamenco Manager should find Blender by itself if you're on Windows, because it will just pick whatever Blender will open when you double-click a Blend file. Uh, on Mac OS, on Linux, you may need to point it to the Blender executable. And once you've entered all that information, basically these two things, where's Blender, where's your files, then you click Next, you confirm, it should automatically restart and you should see this, empty dashboard. Is that working for everybody? Or, yeah, I see a thumbs up. Is it working, is it not? Because, of, yeah? It will. <laughs> good, good, good. Um, so this is when it's unused. When there are no jobs in the system, it won't show any empty task details, it just will in the center tell you to use the add-on because that, that's the next step. Uh, it will also tell you a web address where that manager is reachable. For now, you can just completely ignore it because it's running on your laptop. It will be reachable by localhost anyway. So you click on get the add-on and then you install it like any other Blender add-on. You get a zip in Blender, press install, point it at the zip, that should do it. And then we have this. Be sure to enable it and to click the little triangle to open up the preferences. And then over here, it should already be set to localhost. If you press the refresh button, it should be connecting to your manager and then find it. Also, I set up a video call. Uh, it's a bit tricky with the split screen and everything, but we can make it work. So if there turned out to be many people who want to show their problems so that we can look at it together, you could do a share screen via the video call. Let me know if you want that. Um, do know as a disclaimer that this is being recorded. So sharing your screen then does mean your desktop screen will be part of the public recording. So does this work for people? I see a thumb up, I see another thumb up. Ish, yeah. Are there any problems? People are get, getting stuck here. <laughs> I hear a hey. <laughs> That's fine. Like we we have the time. Uh, I'm speaking fast so that we have more time for you to do your work. Yes, question. Is it expected that on Mac you have to go through package contacts? Yes, because you need to point it to the actual executable. Uh, if there are developers working on Mac and familiar with Mac, I would love to have a better integration with uh, the Mac ecosystem. Maybe some drag and drop support where you can just drag the Blender icon onto the manager interface. I don't know what would be possible on a Mac, uh, but help would be very much welcome. Flamenco found the path right away for Blender. That is great. It has a few techniques in which it tries to find Blender. So on Windows, it uses the file association with .blend files. Um, on any platform, it will look on the system path to see like if you were to type Blender, enter, and that runs, then Flamenco will also find it for you. OK, so if there's no cries for help, then we continue. So open the demo blend file. And then in the properties editor, go to scene and then the flamenco panel. So 
So you want to be at the little printer thingy because that's the output, and we're outputting to Flamenco in this case, so that's why I thought this might be a suitable, suitable location. Open the Flamenco 3 panel. There you can see the job name. You can type in whatever you find useful for identifying the, the current file. Uh, I think even made it by default that if it's not filled in, it will default to the current file name. Uh, you can have slashes in there and that will put it into a subdirectory on the storage when it's copying stuff over. Priority determines the priority when you have multiple render jobs. And they're all queued, it will just pick the one with the highest priority. The tags we will go into later. Most importantly, press this review button here and that should populate this dropdown. And then you can select your render type. Set it to simple, ren uh, simple render. Scene frame range should be, that the frame range of the render should be linked to the scene frame range. This is a new thing in Flamenco 3.3, by the way. Chunk size is what I said before, like how many frames do you render in one invocation of Blender? Render output root, set that to see Flamenco renders or whatever makes sense on your platform. The add path component is a bit of a, a weird thing, but it is super useful in our studio because we store the files in like project slash scene slash shot slash whatever dot blend. When you increase the number, you can include that shot and that scene name from those directories and make sure they're used in the render output as well. And with that, you can just have one render output root for all your stuff and have it pick up these input file dependent uh, things as well. The render output path is where things finally will go. Um, for now, it's a bit of magic, but we'll look at that later. Please just click on submit. It should work. And then when you look at the Flamenco web interface, you should see the thing working. There we go. So for those without a laptop, this is what the Flamen running the Flamenco Manager looks like. It starts up, it tells you like some things about the architecture. You can see that I'm win running Windows 10 Home on, on this laptop. Uh, and it's listening to a certain ports, it's opening stuff, it's doing stuff, and these are the URLs at which it will tell you like, this is where I'm reachable. At first startup, it will open the browser automatically, but that could be annoying on every startup. So it, subsequent startups of the manager, it will just tell you, like, this is where you can find me, and it assumes you know where that is. So have people, do they have it running? Do they see, like, the queued, job in there with its tasks and excellent. Hey. All of a sudden it was showing the presentation on my monitor instead of here. There we go. So next step is start your worker. So next to Flamenco Manager you also find a Flamenco worker executable. On Windows, you can just double click it. On other platforms, you probably know how to start a program. And this will pick up the task. So when you go back to the manager interface, you should see it just running. I'm going to quickly switch my, uh, my desktop over because I don't need the speaker view. And if I don't have that, I can just run Flamenco 
along with all of you. So I have my manager running. And let me quickly go over and run Blender with the job. So in the, in the meantime, are people seeing like moving stuff in the web interface and seeing things being rendered? That is fantastic. Congratulations, you have a running vendor farm. Good. I'm glad to hear that. That was easy, was the voice in the back. <laughs> Um, and yeah, it was our intention to make it this simple to run a render farm. Um, there is, like, you downloaded a special build of uh, the manager, uh, sorry, of Flamenco itself. And that included a little file that prevents one automation. Um, I don't know how this Wi Fi network here is working, whether machines can find each other. Um, we've done this before at a different place where all the computers were wired and they could reach each other. And Flamenco is made for simplicity. So these workers go and look on the network for a manager to connect to. You don't need to configure anything. If your network layout like allows for this, they will just find that manager. And this is what is turned off in the build that you have installed now. Because otherwise, maybe your manager or your worker found, finds his manager and, and his worker finds his manager and they can't find each other's files and it's all a mess. So that is disabled now. So please don't use this build for like production work. Get just a regular download of Flamenco. So now we run Flamenco with a file that was on the shared storage. And that means that nothing had to be copied. The workers could just reach those files directly and life is simple. Maybe in your studio it is, maybe it's not. So we're going to over three different ways in which Flamenco can handle that storage. One thing that you want for that is, again, simplicity. Another thing is efficiency. You don't want to have, like, wait for all the files to be copied every time because that makes people cry. And you want render jobs to be isolated. So when you submit a job, you want it that to be rendered regardless of the work that you do afterwards. And you don't want half your job using the new texture, for example. Uh, you can pick two. So we have three approaches. One is what we've done now, work directly on the shared storage. This won't copy any files, they are in the right place already. It's very simple, it's super efficient, but you don't get that isolation. If somebody changes the file while the job is running, well, that is just being picked up. This might not be an issue, and if it works for you, that's fantastic. Then we have what Flamenco used to do for a long time, and that is just copy all the files that are necessary. So while it's submitting, it will analyze your blend files and all the textures they need and other assets that are on disk. And it will copy all of that into to a directory for that job. This gives you isolation. It's still a rather simple process because it's all automated. It just copies and you wait, um, but it's not efficient. And uh, this became glaringly obvious with uh, the production of Spring where we had like five of these big tree-like creatures that were one and a half gigabytes each, and they were copied for every shot they were in. And it grew huge. So we have a third option that is not simple, but it's both efficient because it only copies what isn't yet on the farm, and it gives you this isolation but it does have more dependencies on the underlying system and it's called the shaman system um, called named after the shaman in Sintel, but also because it takes sha sums of the files to identify them um, i won't go into exact detail how it works just it uses symbolic links and those are difficult for windows and that makes the whole thing much more complex that's the the gist of it. If you have questions about it later, I can definitely answer them. I have a few more slides, but for now I like to move on because we're not going to use it today. So as a little storage experiment, 
for now, we use the first approach, where the project was there. It was on the shared storage. Now copy that same demo file to your desktop or somewhere else that's outside of what Flamenco knows to be our shared storage. And then just open it from there in Blender and submit it again. You don't have to run it. It will probably just render fine because it's like your worker may still be running. But the important bit is look at your shared storage. You will see that it created a new directory there for those files because it wasn't on the shared storage yet. Flamenco thought, well, you're submitting it. I have to copy it to where the workers can reach it. And so it did that. So automatically by just by having the file not on the shared storage, it will switch over to that second approach and still copy things. For this, it's important to know that Flamenco looks at whether files, like external files, are referenced by absolute path or by relative path. If it's an absolute path, it will not copy it. It will assume that that path is valid for all the workers. Again, in the studio, this works fine for us because all of it is running on Linux. All these paths are the same anyway. And we just mount things on slash shared. Anything that points to slash shared, it can be reached by everything on the network. And that is what we use for like bigger caches so that you don't keep copying these cache files around for every render job. They just sit there, one copy of it, and that's it. Uh, files that are relative, like with a relative path to pointing to them, they will be copied. And if they are sitting outside of your project directory, they will be copied like as a thing so that all the job files are still in, in one directory. It's a bit of fuzzy explanation, sorry. But most importantly, relative references will get copied. Absolute references will be untouched. So this is working for people. Do you see a jobs directory that has something new in there? I, yeah, I see some thumbs, I see some nods. Good. So let's take a look at the next thing. That's job types. And this is what you selected. That was the simple Blender render. That's a job type. Um, the echo sleep test is the second job type that is like bundled with Flamenco itself. For me, during development, that was super simple because it just literally, it waits for a number of seconds and then it repeats a sleep for a number of seconds. And Sorry, it, it shows a message. I have to read this well. It shows a message for, uh, and then it sleeps number of seconds for a number of times in different tasks. And this allowed me to test Flamenco without having to bother with like actual rendering and stuff. But also for you to test whether your farm is working, this might be a nice one. Also, it serves well as an example. So let's take a look. You should have a scripts directory. Next to your Flamenco manager and the worker and the tools, you should also have a scripts directory in which you have echosleeptest.js. This is JavaScript. Uh, because Flamenco has a JavaScript engine, it will just run inside the manager. And it has a hint of Python in there because it's communicating, like it's, it's causing, it's sending information to Blender basically, and Blender needs to run its Python code. And this is what a job looks like. So you basically have two ingredients. You have the job type declaration if you ever made a Blender add-on, you know the BL info dictionary at the top. This is a similar thing. And then you have a compile job function. And this is the entry point of this script. It gets whatever got submitted from Blender. And then it's the responsibility of this code to create the tasks and the commands, and et cetera. So in this case, it's just a label. This is the thing you see in Blender. And then you have the settings, and those are the parameters below it. So you have the message, it's, it's a string, it's required. The sleep duration in seconds, it's defaults to one, and then sleep repeats, it defaults to one, they're numbers. And this will automatically, um, automatically generate this part of the user interface. And then compile a job, that receives a job, that job has settings, and those settings actually map to the things up there. So here we author a task, uh, the task is named echo, and the second string is a group uh, that group is misc. This is like a task type. 
the workers can be configured to only run specific task types. Again, by default, this is just a fixed list. If you don't want to think about it, it's fine. All the default things just work. But if you want to have more control, maybe you have like a weaker computer in your network that you want to just do file operations. Moving files around, maybe running FFmpeg, you can just remove Blender from the things it's allowed to do. Um, so that is like that string. Again, there's nothing special about it. You, you can feel free to, to play around with it. And then we have a loop that just repeats, repeatedly authors a sleep task. Once you have your task, you can add these commands. We have an echo command that takes a message and we have a sleep command that takes a duration. And these are things that are actually built into the worker. So if you want to add new commands, then either learn how to program in Go or come to me and tell me what you need. And I'm very interested in the latter. Then these tasks have interdependencies. So in this case, just for this example, I wanted first that, that message to be shown and then all the machines can sleep at the same time. These kind of things are super important when you want to render all the frames first and then you want to have one machine that puts everything into one video. So you can work with these dependencies. Also, what I don't show here is that, again, these uh, tasks also have a priority within the job. So you can have like high priority things, low priority things, work with the dependencies and do all kinds of fancy stuff. Once you have your tasks, you add them to the job and that's it. Now, of course, this is a very simple example. I hope this is followable with people. Again, if you don't understand JavaScript, that's absolutely fine. Um, now look, let's look at the simple Blender render because it's called simple Blender render because it simply runs Blender and it renders. The script is not so simple though. As I said, one of the new things in Flamenco is that little linkage button. Um, also, you can see here that it's not just like inputs, but it's also a read-only thing. And that read-only thing, when you hover over it, you can actually see the value like here. And you can also see that I made a screenshot on a Linux machine faking that I'm on Windows. So that's why the forward slash is there. Please ignore that. Um, so what you can see is that it took the C Flamenco project, which was the render output route. It took that, then added beacon 23 slash render mini, which is the job name. So it took the job name. Then we have a timestamp between curly braces. No idea where that came from. And then the hash marks that give you like the frame number dot something. So let's look at how this was done and, and what is hidden behind it. Again, it's a job type, has a label, has settings. I split it out into three sections. We have the settings for artists to determine. And this is what is important for your artist when submitting a job, this is what they need to do. Then we have the whole logic for the render output route. Of course, also for artists to set, but it's like its own bit of a block. And then we have some automatically evaluated stuff. And here you can see that we have a frame range to render that is an evaluated string. And this is here, this bit is a Python, Python expression that produces a string. And this expression is evaluated by Blender to construct the value of that setting when you submit. Chunk size is just a number. The render output route, I'm not going over all the details here because there's a lot. Uh, most important thing is that this constructs a path and that means it takes the absolute path of the render output route. It takes the last n parts of the blend file like the shop name and the scene name and that, those parts. It, that's where it inserts the job name. And this is where it starts to become interesting. This is where it inserts that timestamp string. And again, this is all evaluated by Blender while it's like showing you that user interface. And then the, these hash marks. Like one of the questions I often get is like, oh, it's so annoying that a timestamp is there. Can we remove it? Like, yeah, just take the file, rip it out. You have your own 
uh, job type now. Um, another thing that I want to highlight here, for example, the chunk size, you can see visible submission, which means this is visible in the submission interface, but later, once it's submitted and you look at it on the dashboard of Flamenco Manager, you won't see this anymore. The chunk size will be apparent from the task name because the task name is going to say I render from this frame to that frame anyway, so let's hide it from the user interface there. And here you have some settings that say, well, the blend file is only visible from the web. While you're submitting, you don't want to have an input field of which blend file to render because it is opening, like you have the blend file open anyway, you don't want to show it. Um, so you have choices in here, visibility hidden, not showing anything at all. Maybe you maybe want to grab like here the scene properties. This evaluates to scene render file extension. Just grab different properties from the blend file and now you can use it in the way you generate your render job. And I'm very quickly going over this. Um, I'm going to skip all of that and walk all the way to the blend file. So in the end, here you can see the authoring of the command and the command is Blender render. That makes the worker know that you want to render something with Blender, that it has to monitor for uh, output files that need to be thumbnailed, etc. This is the executable that needs to be run. This means the Blender that you all just configured. Blender args is another variable. We'll look at that shortly, but this is just the command line argument for Blender that you want to have running for everything. Like minus B for running in the background. Like it's kind of nice for, for your render farm. Then you get the arguments before the blend file name, then you get the name of the blend file, then you get the arguments after the blend file name. If you want to insert specific Python scripts that need to overwrite stuff, or you want to have other specific arguments before or after the blend file name, you can alter that here in the script. And something similar for FFmpeg, it's just run FFmpeg, these are the arguments, go. So now I would ask you to create your own. So in the scripts directory, take that simple blender render.js copy it to myRender.js, just something that is a different name. Open it in a text editor. Change the label in the job type so that you can recognize it when you go to Blender. Change the render output path setting, rip out the timestamp or add it twice or I don't know, do modify it in a way that you want. Restart Flamenco Manager, so you press Ctrl C to stop it cleanly and then you restart it again. And at startup, it will load your new file as well. And then when you go to Blender, you should be able to hit that refresh button for the job types and see your new job type and you can submit your file. While you're doing that, I will give a little bit of explanation of why there are all these refresh buttons in there instead of just automatically fetching it. Um, as a rule, Blender should not do any networking unless it's in response to a clear request of the user. So that you, as a user of Blender, know that like, there is networking going on right now. So it won't go in the background, go and fetch stuff from you, know, you don't know where. Um, like the Blender team is working on something to streamline this, where maybe per add-on you can say, well, this one is allowed to do networking by itself and then the refresh buttons can go away and it can just do that automatically. Uh, but for now, I thought it was good to stick for this add-on with the Blender philosophy and just make it all explicit. explicit. And then you, you're sure that it's not doing anything unless you click a button and tell it to do something. So do people see their render job? Is it working? Fantastic. It's so smooth, you guys are good. Um, let's see how much time I have. Okay, quickly, variables, we've just seen them. We've seen the Blender and the Blender Argus variables. And these guys are a little bit special. It's not just, okay, this variable has this value. 
they can actually define uh, value per operating system. So you can say, well, Blender on Linux is here, Blender on Windows is there, Blender on macOS is there. A um, the question I get is why is this not configured per worker? Because one computer may have a different installation than the other. It's a choice and we decided it was probably easiest to just install it in the same place and have it predictable and then you have only one thing to configure. It's just the manager. The manager tells the workers what to do and there is minimal configuration you have to do on the worker itself. And that means it's much easier to scale up and put new workers there um, because they need very little config. It's also possible for these variables to be without operating system and then they just apply universally. Uh, so this is yes, run in the background. Yes, execute Python code because we have regs that need to work and we trust ourselves. And we've had problems with uh, viewport subdivision, messing up some background renders at some point. So you can also just have Python expressions in there that just need to be run always for every render job. There's also two way variables. So far it was just, okay, this is a variable, has to go there. This is working two ways. So it's not just, this is the variable name and that's its, its value. But Flamenco will actually see, oh, that's the value of a variable name. I'm going to put the variable there. And then later on, do the opposite, variable to value. So for example, you have a variable my storage. The name doesn't matter. There's no magic here. It's just, just a variable name that makes sense to you. It has values for Linux, for Windows, for Mac. Now let's say an artist on Mac submits a blend file and it's sitting there. Flamenco recognizes that the orange bit is the value of that uh, variable. So what it stores is this. And then when it hands out a job or a task that references this blend file, it hands it out to a Windows worker, it will do the replacement. And because this is made for file path replacement, it will also change the backward slashes to forward slashes and vice versa, however it feels fit. And this is the way in which Flamenco can support um, mixed operating system render farms. So this is roughly the end of like the practical stuff that you can do on a laptop. Like right now we're already moving into mixed operating systems territory. Not many people have multiple operating systems running at once on the same laptop. Um, worker tags are new in Flamenco 3.3 and they allow you to tag workers and jobs. So when you go to the, like up there to the tags panel, this is actually a screenshot of the Flamenco running at our studio. We have EV workers, we have Cycles workers, and we have Cycles workers that have a GPU that's powerful enough. And those are the tags. And the, the web interface explains it a little bit, but I'll make it bigger. So we have, like, I think the clearest explanation is from two perspectives. So from the job perspective, a job can have one tag or no tag at all. And no tag at all is like the, the all thing there. So if it doesn't have a tag at all, it can be run by any worker. And that is what we've done now. But when you do give it a tag, it can only be run by workers that have that tag. From the worker perspective, a worker can have any number of tags. So for our workers that have a decent GPU, they're marked both as EV and as uh, Cycles GPU. And when they have tags, they will get jobs with one of those tags. And if a worker doesn't have any tags, it will only run jobs that don't have any tags. And that's how it works. And you can just, while submitting, you can choose where it needs to go and those, that cluster of workers will pick it up and, and do the stuff. Then a thing that I wish I had put in my last year's presentation, so I'm including it now. I want you to go to that little tiny API link over there. And that will open up the API browser for Flamenco Manager. And that looks somewhat like this. 
uh, you can open these things up and see all the parameters. So here you have the API call. Uh, I will, you know what, I will just open it. Live demo, what could possibly go wrong? I have it running here. There we go. So this is the info that you get. Uh, oh, that's, I, I saw somebody like with the uh, problems using this and I was like, how, how did he get to the file path parameter? Because it should be blend file. Well, it's because my example is wrong. Um, so that's always good. But this is what the API call looks like. Uh, this is what hap one of the things that happen when you click the submit button. So if you want to submit uh, jobs to Flamenco without opening them in Blender and like, going through all the user interface, you can also just write some code that does this request. It's based on open API. You can generate a client for pretty much any major language out there and integrate it into whatever you want. Um, and you can click on execute and then it will run the thing and fail because of course the example is wrong. Um, you can get last rendered images. You can, uh, like this is the worker API. This is what the workers use themselves. So everything in Flamenco uses this one API. So anything Flamenco can do, you can do with your own software. Uh, act as a worker and pick up tasks or mark them as failed. Uh, you can all do that. Um, so also the web interface, the add-on, the worker communication with the manager, everything is going through this API system. So what we haven't seen yet is a worker sleep schedule. Per worker, you can tell it when to sleep. So when you have artists working during the day on a machine and you want that machine to switch over to render for them at night, you can tell the worker, okay, listen, from this time to that time, those days of the week, you have to sleep because an artist is using it. And the rest of the time, it will just automatically wake up and start picking up tasks. Uh, we haven't looked at block listing and auto requeuing for failing workers. So when a worker fails a task, that's, I think, pretty gracefully handled by Flamenco. It will assume that first the task is maybe a bit too big for that worker. We've had that where a machine had like too, much, too little RAM and it would crash on one specific blend file. Well, it just gets handed over by another worker. Uh, if it fails by three workers, then it's actually failing because then it's probably a different problem that won't be solved by more repetitions. Um, but there's more stuff going on. There's project finders. That's another thing that's new in uh, Flamenco 3.3. When submitting files to the farm, Flamenco will try to maintain your project structure as closely as possible. But in order to do that, it needs to know what is the root directory of your project. And now it can automatically find that if you have a .svn there or .git or a .blender project file. Um, so that's kind of convenient. Uh, there are systemd integrations on Linux. Uh, there is other stuff going on that we just don't have the time for because I have two minutes. Thank you. <laughs> So I'm super thrilled that nobody got stuck enough to like cry out. Uh, <laughs> that's promising. Any questions? Yes. When I have some link in Blender file, will it say what is the thing, or is there a link with this one? Good question. When you have link, you're linking in other Blend files, does that work? Yes. Um, Flamenco, like when it's on the shared storage, it will just do nothing and be dumb and assume that it works. But when it starts to copy things, it will do an analysis of your blend file. And there is a tool called uh, Blender Asset Tracer, BAT for short, that will open that blend file and go through all these links to other blend files and other blend files and other blend files and find everything that's necessary for that render job and then send that to the farm. So it, it won't copy what it doesn't need. And yes. So is it possible for Flamenco to integrate with other farm software doing non-Blender stuff? We'd have to talk about that because m m the answer is maybe because I don't know what the other stuff entails. But it, uh, it's made for standalone things. Is there any limitations to what it can put across as far as, you know, you can't pack an MP4 or something into a blender or something? Is there anything it's going to come across that it shall? I appreciate the feeling. 
okay. Is it, the, the question is, are there things that it can't pack yeah. up? And uh, in theory, no. Um, in, in practice, uh, BAT is doing analysis of those blend files. It's not Blender itself, which has a whole bunch of advantages, but also means that sometimes it's, it's running behind. So Blender may have added a path somewhere that BAT doesn't know about, and then it might miss something. But that is definitely worth a bug report. Another finger there. Yeah. Um, Multi-layer EXR, yeah. Multi EXR. Yeah. yeah, 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 totally. Um, the simple Blender render also has support for uh, when you render to EXR, whether it's multi-layer or single layer, there is a check mark saying preview. And then Blender will also render a preview JPEG. Uh, Flamenco will pick that up and send the JPEG as last rendered image to be thumbnailed and shown in the web interface. Uh, while it's also, of course, keeping the EXRs. Uh, is it possible for like multiple tasks within the same job to use executables other than Blender and FFmpeg? Oh, like, is it possible to have tasks like to use other things than FFmpeg and Blender? Yes. Um, but like, I want to add a generic command line runner thingy in there. Still have to do it, but it's it's on my list. Uh, and there is nothing, nothing stopping us from like expanding like that. Last question. Good question. Do you plan to add user authentication roles, that kind of thing? No, no. <laughs> One of the big issues of deploying Flamenco 2 was you have to integrate with so many different things. And then there was uh, the component was Blender Cloud and component was running locally. Uh, but you still, in order to use the local thing, you had to authenticate with Blender Cloud, which then authenticates with Blender ID. Uh, like setting all of that up is a lot of headaches. Um, and we could integrate something into Flamenco itself, but also I don't see much use. Uh, you can run a front end like Nginx in front of it if you want to do authentication, but it's not something that will be ingrained into Flamenco. It's really made for smaller studios where people like are adults and understand that they shouldn't mess up each other's stuff. <laughs> Thanks again. <laughs>